The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath began, he came to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all of this? What kind of wisdom has been given to him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin, in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few of the sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. The people in Jesus' hometown are displaying an attitude that is not uncommon among us, It's that attitude that says, I can't let the other side win, even if I'm wrong. That's rooted in pride and jealousy and stubbornness. It was the demise of Saul because of his insecurity concerning David. He was too proud to accept the fact that A new star was on the horizon, David. And he could have gone out very gracefully. And because he couldn't be meek and humble, in all his pride and his jealousy and his stubbornness, his life ends very tragically. You see a hint of this even today with David in his first reading. Yesterday we read about how his son Absalom threatened the throne. And you could see David's insecurity coming out now here where he wants to assess the empire so that he can build up a type of security against anything else happening like this instead of relying on his security and his power in God himself. And this is why he has to face a punishment. He takes matters into his own hands instead of allowing the power of God to support him. You see this kind of attitude, I can't let the other side win even if I'm wrong. You see it happening. You see it a lot in politics. This is what we call partisan politics. It's that sentiment where I can't let that other side win even if I know I'm wrong. It's that jealousy, that pride, and that stubbornness. Indeed, it's a, it's a type of intellectual constipation, if I can use that phrase, that sabotages cooperation and community and wisdom and excellence and greatness. It stops all that. It's the kind of thing, actually, you might, we might be real quick to call this on politics, but it's, it also happens between parents and children. While, while children are trying to stretch themselves and test the borders, it can be very easily easy to see that mom and dad have no agenda except to, sac- to sabotage my freedom and use their authority over me to keep me doing from what I want even though I know it's wrong. And when we see in Jesus here, it takes place in synagogues and even in churches. What? Where did he get this wisdom? They recognize there's a wisdom that he has there. 
What kind of wisdom has been given to him? Where did he get this stuff? Who gave it to him? But we don't like it because we're proud and insecure and we're jealous and we're stubborn. They took offense at him rather than let the wisdom of Christ elevate them. They choose to suppress a better idea because of pride, jealousy, and stubbornness. These things, this pride, this jealousy, and this stubbornness, it's a, it's a type of venom that gives, it's, it's given off by a person who bites with their insecurity. There's a cure for this venom, however. The venom is cured by meekness. You see this also in, you see this meekness in David earlier in the um, books of Samuel, where David comes upon Saul in a very vulnerable position. A number of has, times is, it has the opportunity to even kill him, but he decides not to. He says, I can't take the life of someone who was anointed by the Lord. In other words, David recognizes that he has to let God be in charge. And he's willing to be not a wimp in this case, but he's willing to be submissive to the authority and the power of God as it comes to him. The meek are secure in their identity of who they are as children of God. And the meek are secure in the authority of God and content with that. I was thinking about this little old lady I used to bring communion to. She was in her upper 90s, and she was still able to live at home. She was going pretty well blind once she gave me cookies with ants all over them, but she had no idea that they were there because they were in the jam that she used to make the cookies. I politely accepted them and said, I'll eat them when I get home. She, w she often would be taken advantage by people like someone would come to do, her, do some plumbing work for her or fix a roof, and they would often take advantage of her because she was a little old lady. And one day I asked her about this, and, and I said, aren't you upset at these people? And she said, oh, no, God has his own sweet way about dealing with these things. Was it a coincidence that one of the people who wronged her greatly shortly thereafter went out of business? I don't know. But God has an amusing way of taking care of things when we recognize his power and his authority and we don't have to sabotage it with our own stubbornness, our insecurity, our jealousy, and our pride. No, Jesus, he walks away from this town and you'd think that he is being wimpy here. No, he walks away from this town because he has a bigger agenda in mind. It's the loss of these people for not gaining by his wisdom, his grace, and his goodness. They are compromised to higher intelligence because of their pride and their jealousy and their stubbornness. It, be, it, it is, becomes a self-inflicted wound, and they have to suffer. And someday, Jesus hopes that when he's on the cross, They'll recognize it and come to him, as it is with us. We should look at this deeply, how the effects of pride and jealousy and stubbornness can infect our relationships and our rise to excellence and holiness. We should look at this very, very carefully and not compromise in what it is to be meek, the Gospel of Matthew tells us the meek will inherit the land. In other words, you already have it all. That's what we're secure in. Because of your baptism, it's yours to lose. You'll inherit everything. And so we're secure in this, and we stand in this. <laughs> Yes.
Sorgatici, cut ixit al 